Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, this one is part 24. Fitting the piston rings, followed by the pistons and connecting rods, then running the part built engine using my small electric drill. Here's a set of parts, the three pistons, the three intermediate piston rings and the three high pressure piston rings. I've always found that fitting cast iron piston rings to cast iron pistons can be a very nerve wracking job. The piston rings from Blackgate's engineering were actually quite cheap. The intermediate piston rings from Stuart Models were anything but cheap. And for that reason I'm going to start by fitting the piston rings to this small 3 quarters of an inch diameter piston. I've never seen so many piston rings on such a small piston before. The first thing to do is to thoroughly oil the piston. Fitting the outer piston rings was easy enough. Fitting the middle piston ring was a little bit more difficult because it had to go over one of the outer piston rings to get to the middle slot. As you can see the job was successful and I didn't break any of them. This clip shows the start of fitting the piston into the cylinder. I don't have a piston ring compressor. I would normally use a nylon cable tie to compress the piston into the grooves. I thought I would show an alternative method. Whichever method you use you need to be gentle with it. I'm applying some gentle positive pressure on the piston which firms up the piston ring that you're trying to get into the bore. And here I'm just working my way around with a small screwdriver pressing the ring into the slot and very soon all three piston rings are in the cylinder bore and better still none of them are broken. I assumed these piston rings to be an exact three quarters of an inch diameter but unfortunately the cylinder bore is exactly three quarters of an inch in diameter so I have a bit of an interference fit going on. I will think about this whilst I'm unpacking the intermediate cylinder's piston rings and I'm trying really hard not to break them in the unpacking process. When I spoke to Andy at Stuart Models, before I bought these, I said, I am actually sitting down. They are very expensive. Why didn't I buy the intermediate cylinder rings from Blackgate's Engineering? Well, they only had them in 3 seconds of an inch thickness. And I didn't want to deviate too much from the drawing. And I didn't want to remachine this piston or make a new one for the intermediate cylinder. Learning from fitting the piston, which was too tight, in the high pressure cylinder, I thought I would just check the size of these. And these were also an interference fit. So I spent a bit of time with all six piston rings, grinding off a tiny bit of metal in each of the gaps. I carefully used my one inch belt sander for this. Thankfully the low pressure cylinder already had a piston ring fitted. And surprisingly, this one was very reluctant to go back into the bore. So it's a perfect opportunity to show the way I normally fit piston rings to model engine cylinders. I use a nylon cable tie like this, making sure that the cable tie is on the correct side of the cylinder cover studs. I tighten it up, that compresses the ring, so then I just press it down into the cylinder, job done. No problems here, this one was in the engine when I got it. And it's a perfect fit and moves up and down quite well. Now it's time to fit the intermediate piston. I've ground the gap on every one of the rings a very tiny amount and now, as before, applying gentle pressure to the piston, I press the ring into place in the gap and one by one the rings enter the cylinder with no problem at all. Some cylinders have a taper at this point which helps with fitting of piston rings but this one is at a perfect 90 degrees. You have to be firm but gentle with this job as you can see now, the piston goes all the way to the bottom of the cylinder. It's a fairly tight fit, but that will run in. It must be okay if I can press it to the bottom of the cylinder using my finger. Before I reduced the gap slightly on the rings, I would have had to use a hammer to do this. But now everything's fine. Now it's time to fit the crosshead guide to the large gunmetal bracket on the columns. I ground the end of the mounting bolt like this, so it will self-center in the hole. This just makes it an easier job to fit it. And here it is. This crosshead guide is firmly fitted to the bracket now. And the crosshead still goes up and down smoothly. This is the high pressure piston. And here I'm removing the rings very carefully. I don't want to break them. So I can grind off a very small amount of the gap. And here they are after a visit to the belt sander. All I had to do was touch one side of the gap very gently on the sanding belt after which I refit the piston rings to the piston. 
This is a different angle on how I fit the piston rings. Gentle pressure on the end of the piston holds the piston ring in position and allows me to press it into the slot. This process is exactly the same one that I use when I'm cracking combination locks. I've never had a life of crime, it's just something I do for light entertainment. If you apply gentle pressure to the lock part of the lock, you will feel a very slight movement when you get the dial in the right place. As with a lot of the things I do, it's largely a question of feel. It would appear that I have a bit of a problem. The middle connecting rod does not fit on the crosshead. It's not in line, but it was originally because the engine was assembled. I must have reassembled the connecting rod the wrong way around by accident. The connecting rod of the low pressure cylinder is a perfect fit. It's number two that's the problem, so I just undid everything, removed it, turned it round, refitted it, followed by the pin. Please note I'm only using the pliers to hold the pin in place. I'm not putting enough pressure on with the pliers to mark the metal. I use the nut spinner to initially tighten the nut and then I use the spanner. When I turn the crankshaft by hand, I can't tell you how well it feels. It's very firm, a little bit scratchy sounding as it would be. Most of my previous girlfriends usually were. And by that I mean scratchy sounding, not necessarily firm. Very shortly I'm going to rotate the crankshaft using my electric drill. But I can't do that if this connecting rod is not in the right position. I'm just using a cable tie and it does the trick. Before I run the engine I need to apply a lot of oil to the cylinder bores. These are brand new rings. This is compounded bearing oil from a company called Hallett Oil and it's formulated for steam engine bearings. I spread the oil around both cylinders using my finger. And now ladies and gentlemen I give you an engine with piston rings. After a very short run I decided to lubricate every moving part of the engine. Even the connecting rod that's only driving the cable tie. Once I connect my electric drill I start off slowly rotating the crankshaft then I speed up. After a very short time I stop the engine to double check the lubrication. In this clip I'm oiling the crosshead pin and the crosshead guides. Now it's time to bed in the piston rings. I'm going to stop talking for a while so you can listen to the sound of it. It sounds beautiful. Just look at the flywheel and the end of the crankshaft. No wobble at all. Everything's working perfectly in harmony. After running the engine like this for a while, I cleaned off all the oil that had splashed about. And when I rotate it by hand now, it feels absolutely beautiful. Completely devoid of any play in any of the components. I think the next job is to fit the reversing mechanism and time the engine. But that's not in this episode, it will be in a future one. I'd like to say as I always do, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.